and the parameters we can play with here is how many times it kind of uh, wraps around itself and the divisions of that picture, hexagonal pattern. Um, those are the sliders that we want to, to play with. Um, the geometry that we get out of it is that mesh. So we put the geometry into this one. So this is the component one. And then we can add uh, a number of performance values that we want to know something about. Um, in this case, we've just added the area of the mesh uh, and the, the coordinates of the centroid, and then the number of, uh, of nodes and the number of faces. Just to say that we can input any performance values into this. It could be come from Duramba or Ladybug, Honeybee. It could be any. A value that you can actually get uh, in Grasshopper from your normal definition. So let's um, open this. So this is the interface and um, we're really aiming at making this as simple as possible so it's very intuitive to use so I'll be happy to hear feedback on, on that. Um, you open it, it's just a blank thing, nothing is really going on, a little bit of about this, uh, but you start out in the population, um, and here you can specify how big your population is and how much you want the genes or the parameters to mutate in each generation. Um, so in this case, we say, okay, we want a generation or a population of 100 members, 100 designs, um, and just to make it more clear what we're doing, we put this a little bit down. That's all I have to set when you press go. And then this pops up. Um, and I'll just, I'm used to having two screens, so this is a little bit, uh, <laughs> I want to drag it around. Um, this is a k-means clustering of those hundred different designs. And the reason for doing that is it's really hard for the human to, to look at 100 different designs, look at all the performance of that, each of them, and, and really evaluate which one do I like. So we want to make it easier for you. So, so the k-means clustering are looking at the entire population and saying, can we group these into 12 designs? Um, and these are the 12 clusters, and there are different um, amount of members in each cluster. We have at least one, but uh, you can see here we have quite a lot. And if you count all the dots, you it will add up to 100. Each of these centroids, that's kind of the representative design of that cluster. That's the one that we will see in the next tab. If we go in here, then we actually see the design. It would be quite difficult to display a hundred design here. So this is a way of visualizing how they're grouped. And if we, because this is an example uh, where we on purpose only have three parameters that we are adjusting, so these three, right? Then we can actually visualize it in, in, in 3D space. But this works for n parameters, uh, so in n-dimensional space. But this shows the clustering actually. So you can see that each dot represents a nervous strip and dots that are close to each other are in the same cluster. So it means that probably because the parameters here are, are quite close to each other, probably the design will be quite similar so we can find a representative design. shows us the different options um, and it's really useful just to explore like how does the parameters influence the design um, but we don't have to specify one fitness function and how do you evaluate aesthetics as a fitness function how, how do you put a number to that how do you if you have more criteria how do you weight them uh, into one value I mean you can use octopus for more values, but still it's a little bit hard to, you spend a lot of time to define your fitness function to actually get meaningful results out, whereas here you can really just use your intuition um, to, to, to guide it. And the thing is here, you see 
different designs, and you can evaluate their performance by these color-coded uh, dots. Um, and that corresponds to the performance values you added to the component. So I guess we have six um, values coming in here. So we have six dots. Um, and they are shown here for design one zero. Um, and they are kind of, they have a color gradient. So the strongest red will be the one with the highest value of the X coordinate. Um, and the very vague one will be the lowest value. So it's kind of like you can fairly quickly see where do we have the maximum and minimum of a value. Because we don't know if we're trying to reach a maximum and minimum because we have so many values uh, that we can input. So, for example, if you look here, the green one, there's a circle around it. That means that it has a maximum value. Because, and I say maximum because I can see the green one is not a vague green, it's a very powerful green. So let's see, there we have the vague one with a circle around it, so that's the minimum one. And if we look at what that corresponds to, it's the node count which kind of makes sense, that has the highest number of nodes, the lowest number of nodes. So it's a way to, like, uh, you make informed decisions. So you can, you can look at the performance, you can say, great, I want to minimize this, and then you keep on picking the design that minimizes something, or you can look at it and say, well, I actually don't care about the performance, and I just let the evolution uh, be driven by the aesthetics. But at least you know, and that's the so I'll just show you that if we zoom out a little bit, um, it's if you can do it. If you double click here, you can see the, the geometry in here as well. So actually, I mean, this is a viewport, so you can zoom in and stuff, but maybe it's a uh, it's a little bit small, so you might want to see it in the viewport instead. But then you, you just double click and, and you see that one, um, and as you click. You can see now I've selected design number five. And if I click here, I get the values corresponding to each frame. Right. Um, so then the next step is to say, okay, which one do I want to use as parents for the next generation? And um, I'm just gonna select that one. That's a great one. And I could select, select more if I want, like these two. And then I press evolve. Then I get new ones, uh, which should be more in the direction of the ones I just selected. So let's uh, try to make that a little bit more clear. Maybe we should select that one. And then we get more, well, <laughs> more results that are very similar. But um, imagine you have a more complex definition then. Um, yeah. But you can also now, if I feel like I'm a little bit stuck in one design, I could just go back here and say, okay, now I want to mutate things a little bit more. Let's put this up. Let's go back and say, okay, what about that one? And then we should get back to a little bit more variation again. And we can follow uh, the clustering as well. Uh, it should be a little bit, like you can see, it, it's uh, a little bit more focused towards some designs uh, like when we started. Um, yeah, so I think that's a, a, a general introduction to the tool. Uh, and of course, you can just keep on going until you reach something that you're happy with. Um, and um, the general idea is that it would be, if we just only had this tag, or we have 12 designs and we just uh, evolve based on that, then we don't get enough variation. So that's actually why we use the k-means clustering to get the variation, so we get a much larger po population that we actually show. But this is just to uh, make it easier for us to actually navigate this design space. So that's where we are right now. And the um, next step is to build this one up. Uh, and that is uh, to kind of store the history of what you've selected. And then um, you could see that story, and that might be quite nice to show, but also it would maybe you end up somewhere where you thought, well, actually, a few steps before that, I was more happy with the result. Then you could just go back, click on that, and input that back into the space. 
so that's that's um, the last thing we, we need to do. Um, but this is uh, all open source, and um, and we are looking for people to test it now, give it some feedback. Um, if it's useful for you, um, things that are not intuitive, we would be very happy to hear about that. Um, and yeah, then John, so I mean, John's really the master brain behind this, right? I'm just helping out. And um, <laughs> he just sent me an example today, which he said I should uh, show you. So I will, and um, I hope it will <laughs> work. Um, <clears throat> so it's about uh, a problem which would be quite hard to solve in uh, Galapagos, for example. It's like we have this um, wire and um, <coughs> we want to untangle it. So we have this thing. And, um, and we want to figure out how to change these so we get back to something that's untangled. And if you just let Galapagos run this, it could just take ages. And how do you define untangled? I don't know. Um, so <laughs> let's try with this one. Uh, and I haven't tried this before, so bear with me. Um, but OK, let's press it. Uh, we get this clustering. And then uh, let's just look for something that looks a little bit less uh, crazy. Maybe that one is good. Uh, if you see something before I do, just uh, screen the number at the see. Do you want me to get higher or lower line? Or lower. Lower? Yeah. That one's Yeah. Are we getting there? Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go go back to, to unevolve? Uh, <laughs> well, I could just exit and uh, go out of it if I want to go back. No, I mean if, if the, the the step before shows. Ah, yeah. So that was what I was. That, that um, was the history. Yeah. yeah. If I want to get back to a more um, varied population, I would go in here and say, "Well, give me mutations to get out of what I've narrowed into," and then. Um, I'll just run it again, and then it'll give me a lot more uh, variation in different options. But I, I think I'm, I'm quite uh, satisfied with this. We're definitely improved since the beginning, so let's just stick with that. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave it for here um, for now, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to hear your comments uh, on this. Thanks. <laughs>